hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. This is Anonymous T. Hope you're having an amazing day today. Today, I am reacting, recapping, reviewing Ready to Love Season 5, Episode 13, Reunion Special, Part 1, DC, DMV, Chocolate City, and OMG, where to start, where to start, where to start. So per usual, they start off with a little se season recap of what took place and this and that and how we've got here. And then we get a little PSA message from Nephew Tommy. Uh, but actually, in all seriousness, Nephew Tommy basically did a video message to send to everybody basically saying that he was not fired or replaced like some of you guys were thinking, possibly, allegedly. He said, Arr! actually, he has COVID-19, and although he is feeling good, they wanted to take the appropriate precautions and safety measures. So he is sitting this one out, but enlisted his friend Tanika Ray, who is a DC native, to handle the cast. And for those of you who don't know Tanika Ray, her big claim to fame is she used to be the host of Extra, which is like similar to an Entertainment Tonight e -no news type of show. So that's on that. So next, they start off with the reunion, right with the bombshells, right with Sydney and Sean's arc. And so they discuss Sean first. And um, it was funny because he pretty much had a realistic approach, I felt, when after they showed his package and his reaction to being eliminated, he pretty much, you know, saw the show for what it was, that either you were going to find a connection or you weren't, but he wasn't about to force himself just to stay on the show or just to try to make it to the end or try to align with people. If they didn't want him, if they didn't want to talk to him, he was freeing himself and that's on that. So he was good. Also, they wanted to discuss the situation between Sabrina's friends as well as Sean and the awkwardness of it. Sabrina had apologized and she also had apologized after it originally happened. I just don't think it was on camera, uh, but pretty much said that she was sorry for them. So then after that, that was a quick segment. They went into Sydney's storyline. So they show Sydney's entrance again. The guys are all shook. Even the guys claiming to be into their women, they were all shook and talking about, wow, Sydney really made an entrance. So they were asking Sydney kind of where things stand, because as you know, Sydney's main connections were Frank and Phil. However, I feel there were other connections she had, but I feel like it was left off camera on purpose for whatever reason. But it was funny because even I was feeling Tanika when she said that she's going to start using wet your whistle, because that's like something stuck in my head now. Uh, definitely something to use one day. So, and it was just funny watching back everything, the smitten kitten giving me butterflies. It was just hilarious. So Tanika asked them whether or not Phil and Sydney were exclusively dating or not. And so essentially they confirmed that they were. So we'll see what happens with the two of them. Congratulations. We'll see what transpires with them as a couple. Then we get into Camille. Camille, who bragged that she was a theater major and is trying her best one life to live. Vicki Buchanan, multiple personality storyline on this reunion, saying that she has Olivia and Shay Shay personalities and that allegedly tonight she is just Camille. She is here as normal, but she will still give you the facial reactions and the facial expressions and everything else. And here's the thing. I'm just going to keep it a buck. I think, obviously, Zadia, Camille, Bailao. Bailao, when I say Bailao, that's Naeem's last name. So Bailao, Camille, Cornelius, and Zadia, I think they all made a pact that they were not only going to play up themselves as a couple, but they also were going to have the men essentially rally behind them, no matter what it was, whether it was true or false. 
and the women were going to tone down and pretend to smile and deny everything to try to make it seem it was all editing's fault as if to get a better edit for the reunion because they were getting dragged all season for being exposed for being mean girls. That is what I think took place and nobody can tell me different because the cast kept calling them out. So that is on that. Camille alleges and claims that she's since been to therapy, but you've been to therapy, but you don't hold yourself accountable for your actions. You don't admit to being wrong and you still are blatantly lying. So not sure what therapist you're going to, but there still needs to be some more work done. Also, Sabrina made a comment, and this is the Sabrina I wanted to see on the show. She was not holding back. I felt that only Sydney and mainly Aisha were the main ones, both on the show and on the reunion, who did not care about anything, and were going to hold Zadia and Camille accountable for how they were behaving. So they were asking Sabrina because she was giving these looks and she made this comment that, you know, how possessive Camille was over Cornelius. And it just seemed as though they had a lot to say, but initially they wanted to hold back. And I was trying to figure out why. But basically, when Tanika asked Sabrina how she felt about the situation, she said she has nothing to do with whatever's going on over there. So then Aisha was chiming in because she was over the fakery. She was over everybody being silent. Pretty much the whole cast knows who Camille and Zadia really are. And it sounds like they are bullies. And even though they had a conversation about what aggressive means in the black community, specifically against black women, in the case of Zadia and Camille, their behavior is aggressive, though. Camille is outwardly saying day one that Cornelius is her boyfriend. She doesn't let anybody talk to him. She's completely possessive of him. She's telling people that she's going to F them up if they put him in the bottom. She's going to disinvite people to her wedding if they say Cornelius's name. Then she turns up her face at deliberations if people say they don't like Cornelius, but you don't want anyone else to like Cornelius, but you like it's just too much. And then when you get called out about it, when you and Zadia get called out about it, you guys want to play victim. And you want to play this angle oh, we're the brown girl squad and everybody is jealous of us. And I've got more on that to say in a little bit, but I am over it. It is fake news and they need to hold themselves accountable that this little act that they tried tonight, nobody's buying it. If anything, it made more people disgusted. So next we called Tyrone, called him and... (laughs) Oh, man. Then right after they make the announcement, which I already knew from the trailer that Shiloh was unable to be here today. And I knew Shiloh wasn't going to be arriving. I just knew she there was no way she was showing up to this reunion. It wasn't going to happen. So it was funny. Tyrone ended up apologizing to Carrie, basically saying that that whole conversation where he was calling her aggressive, he said he should have just simply told her that he had a better connection with another woman and wanted to pursue that since it was stronger and let carry down gently versus the conversation that he had that was completely messy. So then they were asking about the comment where Tyrone made that Shiloh is wife material or what have you. And so essentially... Tyrone went back and talked about how they were at the men's deliberation and they were going around describing all of the women. And so he had put kind of in the different categories of who's dateable, who's relationship material and who's wife material. But it was funny because live on the reunion, he said that Carrie was wife material and not Shiloh. Shiloh has just completely fell off the face of the earth. She is a complete no-show, a complete non-factor, just like that. I mean, the way Carrie just immediately rolled off his tongue, I was like, what is going on? What is going on? And so next, they then say, we are getting into Cornelius's journey, which I knew was just going to be fake news because Cornelius has no backbone. Cornelius isn't going to stop the train wreck. That is this 
nonsense with Camille. So really, it wasn't a segment. It was just filler as far as I'm concerned. So that's on that. So then they were then cutting to the men's reaction and backstage and in the uh, different backstage areas because a lot of the cast were separated for certain segments of the reunion. So you could just tell that the men do not see it for Camille. One of them tried to stick up for her and um, stick up for Cornelius because pretty much they were calling out Cornelius for not ever really pursuing anything with any of the other women besides briefly him and Courtney. But essentially, all the other women felt as though they weren't allowed to talk to him. They weren't allowed to get to know him because of Camille, because of her vowing that this was her man and anybody that stepped to him, she was basically going to go to war for him. So they show his little package or whatever, and I just was over it. He's up here trying to double down that he always knew he wanted Camille and trying to allege that he didn't want to get to know other people and didn't have any regrets, even though that was not the same energy on the clips, on his diary session interviews that he was telling the public. And if you're in the second place, just say it. Blink twice if you're being kidnapped. Blink three times if, Can if Camille is paying you to pretend to be her boyfriend. Just let me know when the contract expires. That's all I want to know. Just let me know. That's all I want to know. Because they are trying so hard to convince people that they're a thing that it almost looks like they are playing this up for attention. And I can't take them seriously. And considering the interview that Cornelius just did previously with um, Simone and Rashid, I'm just, I'm all the way done with Cornelius because he was just doing nothing but lying the entire interview and I had to turn it off. I couldn't take anymore. I just, I cannot deal with people who blatantly want to lie and when the evidence is presented in front of you, you still want to build another lie on top of it and do all of these shenanigans. No, 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 no. Own what you said, own how you are behaving, own what you are doing, or keep it moving. But to lie on top of the lie? No, 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 no. No, you don't have my respect. Sorry. Mm-mm. So again, the women were essentially saying that Camille was aggressive in her approach. She, again, her and Zadia both came across as bullies. So, and again, the ladies were trying to get it in and trying to expose how Camille, how Zadia was being on this show. And it just sounds like it was horrible. It sounds like the edit that we did get was not even the half of the real Camille and the real Zadia that is true mean girl energy. So essentially, they said that Camille was very aggressive. Camille would make all these threats. People could not get in a word without Camille basically trying to take over any type of conversation you were having with Cornelius. It just seemed like a joke. It truly seemed like a joke. So other people were essentially saying that they feel that Cornelius has regrets and that he's essentially pressured into this situation. And I agree. And he's never going to admit it. But it's obvious because if he had a backbone, if he really was a man and really standing in his truth, he would say what it is. And he's sitting there dressed like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And I just couldn't take him seriously. And then had the grill in his mouth and his bottom teeth. I just couldn't take him seriously. You're a Christian, but you're looking a hot mess and you're having a non-Christian interview on another platform. So it just told me everything I needed to know that this is just one big act for you and Camille and you're trying to maybe book some gigs after this. I don't know, but it just seemed very fake. So so that's on that. Next, they were discussing the situation with <laughs> with. Frank and Mumin, OMG, that was something. Okay, so essentially, Mr. Frank, who was in these cowboy boots, it was just a hot mess. Frank it was this season's, uh, oh, what is his name? This season's Calfani. That is who he reminds me of where he did just enough to make sure he secured himself to the end of the show. And then the immediately when filming wrapped, 
he went ghost. He disappeared. He went back to his real life. He went back to his real girlfriend. That was what this Frank and Moomin thing was giving me. I think that Frank obviously was way more into Sydney, but I think he chose Moomin for optics to make it seem as though he is willing to be celibate, that he's willing to wait till marriage for your sex, but I just didn't buy it. I just thought he was full of it. And if you notice his interactions with each of the ladies, he didn't really kiss anybody. He just made it a point to either hold hands or hug them. And then when you saw the Becky ex-girlfriend, I already knew what time it was. He was probably with her the whole time. They probably never broke up as far as I'm concerned. Because the only person that he gave the most physical affection and attention to was Sydney. Everyone else, it really wasn't that type of energy. I honestly think Moomin got played by her brown girl squad friends. They sabotaged her because they thought they were making it to the end. So they sabotaged their friend is what I think would happen. They sabotaged Moomin on the retreat with trying to basically gas up the Sabrina and Walter situation when clearly there was nothing there between the two of them. And essentially they just wanted Moomin out of the way and having her go in another direction, but that was all sabotage on their part. Because I honestly think if Moomin and Walter had a real conversation and didn't let the outside forces kind of, you know, dictate whatever nonsense was happening, I think they would have been together in the end. I truly do, because they honestly had a connection. They were truly feeling each other. Like I saw what it was. So, but Walter really had no choice once Moomin changed up at the retreat. So it was like, what, what would you do? What do you do at that point? So, and then I was kind of agitated because Frank just didn't say what it was. Frank just couldn't own, hey, I was no longer interested. He went into all of these different stories that he was dealing with all of the stuff during filming. Like he just kept making up excuse after excuse after excuse and Courtney in the backstage was like, hey, can you just be direct? Can you just say what it really is? Because we just don't have time. So it was just awful. And then Mumin started crying and I just felt bad for her because I'm like, it just felt like Frank was trying to gaslight and humiliate Mumin on camera. And it just wasn't necessary at all. It just, he didn't need to do all of that. Like, just say that you weren't interested. Just say you would have wished that it was Sydney there at the end. And since it was it, you just put up a brave front because you didn't want to self-eliminate or anything like that. So you just ended up being with Moomin since she didn't have any other options at that point. And that is where we are. But immediately when the camera stopped rolling, so did you and you went back to your girlfriend. That's all you had to say. If we're keeping it a buck. And then it was weird because Walter... <laughs> Walter is on this poor couch at the end, looking like furniture, blending into the furniture. Phil was calling him a vase. It was just hilarious because I was like, why is Walter out there for this segment? Like, why? Are they going to discuss Walter and Moomin or otherwise can he go backstage too? Because he was just looking uncomfortable once the lady started to get into it. And it was just, it was just awful. So now we get into the brown girls squad nonsense. And even Tanika said she felt offended by this. You know, it's bad enough that we deal with colorism. It's bad enough how much division is already that exists in the black community. And then to just say this whole brown girl squad, squad thing, like it was just too much. And of course, Camille and Zadia tried to downplay it and tried to make it seem as though it wasn't what it was. And Zadia tried to play it down that, oh, you know, it just meant that when I saw Camille the first day, I just knew we were going to be friends. Well, yeah, because you guys are both mean girls and you guys are both messy. So all of us could have told you that, but you didn't have to come up with brown girls squad. Remember before in Ready to Love Houston, we had Frick and Frack, or there's some type of nickname, but not something, oh, Brown Girl Squad. And so they kept trying to deny it. Then the ladies called out that there was a specific Instagram page devoted to the Brown Girl Squad. And then 
Sabrina. Oh, I was so happy for Sabrina and Sydney and Aisha for calling out the nonsense with Camille and Zadia. They pretty much said, Sabrina said that essentially this brown girl squad did exist. That they said that Aisha was not brown enough. That Sabrina was too light for the brown girl squad. And it sounded like they were trying to cut her off. But there was a lot of bullying. There was a lot of mean girl tactics that Camille and Zadia were doing all season. That we probably didn't even see the half that uh, was able to make it on the show. But I was just so disgusted. And I knew there was more to it. I mean, they had a whole hand, hand signal and everything like it was a sorority. Like it was just so dumb. They really tried to downplay and lie about everything. And I just have no respect for that. It's clownery. It's tomfoolery. Just own what it was. You making comments of who's not brown enough and too light skin. Like that's what we're doing. You didn't need to be on this show. You needed to be in therapy and deal with your childhood trauma and your childhood issues as to why you even have to come up with something like this, denoting which brown girls can be involved in your little brown girl squad when everybody's brown. It's just too much. I just couldn't take it. I was just, I was just too through. But essentially they called out that Camille and... Zadia, they were doing a lot of foul things to the other ladies in the cast, and then they would turn around and play innocent. And when you called them out, they would play victim. They would pretend that they didn't know what you were talking about. They would pretend that they didn't know what happened. And I wish we would, they should have just exposed it all, as far as I'm concerned. Because this little pretend act that they're doing on this reunion where they're just going to smile and this and that. Yeah, uh, no, 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 no. Because if that was the case, why did Zadia get up and walk off the set when she was being called out? Because she knew it. She knew it was true. She couldn't defend herself. She knew what she was doing. Because if she was going to defend herself and own, or even own what she was doing, she would have stayed on that stage. But she knew she was wrong. She knew that she could not handle Sabrina, so she walked off stage and said, oh, well, I'll just, I'll come back whenever they call me to come back. And I was like, girl, come on now. Come on now. Really? Really? So then after all of that, um, <laughs> you know, they're again calling Camille and Zadia nasty, a bully, just everything. And then Cornelius heading into commercials like, oh, I thought that was my segment. And I'm like, really, Cornelius, what were you going to say? Because you say nothing in the presence of Camille. So come on now. You knew it wasn't your segment. You knew it was a prop to set up the Camille stuff. You knew that already. Come on, dude. Because you won't tell us the truth. You won't tell us how you really feel. You are at the point now, you are so far in to this sham that you are openly lying for Camille when there is actual footage and receipts of her behavior. That's how bad it's gotten. And I have no respect for you, dude. So, no, you didn't have a segment. Sorry, didn't have it. So, then after that, essentially, they brought out most of the group and then, you know, I don't know what's going on with Bailao. And it was funny because Sydney said that he needed a peach and I fell on the floor. I was cracking up because it was, I don't know where Bailao came out of nowhere. He is up here talking about, oh, the women, they are all jealous of Zadia because seven out of the eight men or whoever, they all picked her night one in deliberations. What? Sydney wasn't even on the show then. Libba was eliminated before there was <laughs> even a thing for her to even know about. She wasn't, she wasn't even on the show. So what are you talking about? The women were jealous of Zadia. Huh? Again, he obviously, this again was just fake news. This was the script that he was given by Zadia. 
that they are hating on her because they are jealous of her when the footage actually shows that she is the problem. She is the one putting fingers in people's faces. She is the one that is getting into arguments with the other women, telling Sydney not to call her a girl. All of this drama. But she can pretend and put the smile on her face and let Bailao do the talking for her that, oh, they're just jealous. And I agreed with Sydney. One of the men needed to check him. He was looking like a fool. He looked like a complete and utter fool. He looked like Peter Thomas from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Completely out of turn, out of pocket, completely unrelevant to the situation at hand. He wasn't making sense. Even Tanika was trying to figure out what he was talking about. What does the men's deliberation have to do with anything? The issue at hand is Zadia's behavior. That is the issue because they were replaying the retreat argument between what happened with Camille basically saying that if anybody put Cornelius at the bottom, she was going to F them up. And then Zadia, you know, going to bat for her brown girl squad co-founder. So it was just a hot mess. It was just a hot mess. And I just couldn't take it. So then after that, um, you know, Bailao was trying to call out one of the other ladies that were coming for him and say, oh, well, it just looks like some people, they're just thirsty for friendships. And I'm like, get this dude a peach because I cannot take it. I cannot. So then after all of this, they dive into Camille's comments because once again, you know, Cornelius was completely trained by Camille to lie with her about everything that she did say and do, but lie and deny. That was their strategy tonight. So they played the clip, I don't know how many times, of Camille saying she's going to F anyone up that puts Cornelius at the bottom. And again, Camille's in denial. She's like, no, I didn't say that. It was a voiceover. And clearly they replayed it again and again and again after that, where you clearly see Camille's mouth moving, uttering the words, I will F them up. And so then she's trying to mimic in the package, oh, well, I was just sticking my finger in my mouth. I'm not really saying anything. So then it plays again. Tanika asked the cast, say I for all of you who feel that you heard Camille say, I will F you up. And all of them basically say, I. And Camille, of course, turns up her face. And so then to see as she was just over it. She was just over the nonsense. So she gets up. She walks off set. She says, this is ghetto. Tanika asks her to come back. She's like, no, this is ghetto. This is trifling. I'm not about this life. And these are 30 and 40 year old people up here acting ghetto, acting ratchet for what? And I agree with her to an extent. The, the ghetto and the ratchet behavior was just too much. And grown adults not admitting when they're doing and saying wrong, that is agitating. That is annoying. And you hate that when you see people who are grown and around the same age as you, and there's literally evidence playing multiple times back to back to back to back, proving what they said, and they are still going with the lie. They are still writing with the lie until the complete end. And it was just too much. I was over it. I couldn't stand it. And I just couldn't take it. But then uh, Tasia brought up that her mom was in the hospital and all of this and that. And I'm like, your mom's in the hospital. So, you know, what is going on? Why are you even wasting your time at this reunion? But then I remembered, I'm like, well, it is a pandemic still. So maybe it's a situation where Again, maybe visitors are limited or maybe she's not allowed to go. I don't know. Or maybe she just wanted to show up so she didn't get fined so she can get whatever the little reunion check is that they get. So maybe that's what it was. But once she saw how ratchet and ghetto it was getting, she just couldn't take anymore. But it felt as though there was a lot edited out of who Zadia and Camille were really being, not only on the season, but also in this reunion. They were really trying to play up these fake smiles and because of the fact that they didn't yell or didn't argue with any of the other ladies that they were somehow misunderstood or that they were, it was all editing. And clearly there is no amount of editing that you can do to 
show that obviously the real person is a liar. Obviously the real person is a mean girl. There's there's no editing that you can take out of that when somebody's problematic like that. You just cannot edit that out. So I was done with them. I was over the clownery. I was over the tomfoolery. I was over the ignorant behavior. I just couldn't take it. I was all done. And so then Sabrina said at the end, see, we all must be crazy like they said. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. Where was this energy on the show? If you guys would have just got them together right from the jump and nip this mess in the bud, it wouldn't have created the monsters that we have now that now are having their paid boyfriends simply agree with everything that they say, even if it's a lie. So it's just a little bit too late, unfortunately, because now these people are in full victim mode and pretending that they did not say or do any of these things. And I was, I just couldn't take anymore. I was just so done. I was so glad the episode was over because I was just too through. I just couldn't. And so then it looks like the preview for next week, um, Corey is going for the Oscar nomination. Maybe this is his reel that he submitted because he's waiting for the Oscars to be announced, what the nominations are going to be. So this reel came just in time with the tears because I have no idea what the heck is happening. <laughs> like, I do not. What is going on? But allegedly, Tasia was some type of love square, love hexagon, love pentagon with Corey and all of the other 10 people that he said that he was going to fit into his calendar for one weekend. I don't know. But that seems to be the focus of next week. And of course, more Camille drama because... Shiloh's not there to really dive into the whole Phil situation and this reunion. I don't know. It's just not giving what I thought it was going to give. But maybe Aisha can right the ship and set Zadia straight the next episode. That's really all that I'm looking for. As well as Zadia to take accountability and apologize to Dante for her putting her finger on his nose and all of that nonsense at the restaurant. Like, it was just too much. It was just too much ratchet behavior for no reason. And nobody being adults, nobody being honest, and people just trying to hide behind these lies and stay with the lie and ride with the lie to the sunset. And I was just, I just couldn't. So we have one more episode, thank goodness. And then we are repeating the season <laughs> in two weeks. So... That is all that I have. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Please react. What did you think of this reunion episode? What did you think? What is your reactions to everything? What are your thoughts? So with that being said, those of you, if it's your first time at my channel, welcome. Please check out my playlist and other things I've reacted to and reviewed. I also have a playlist of the episodes that I've reviewed thus far this season of Ready to Love, and here we are. So please check that out. Also, those of you who've been back multiple times, thank you so much for your continued support. I'm grateful, thankful, and appreciative of each and every single one of you. I see all of your comments, and I appreciate all of the reacting, all of the feedback, and everything you guys have to say. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys all again very soon.